out today. And as Mrs. Christensen said, we are excited to be able to share this with an audience after so many weeks of work. Um, the stories you're going to see today will bring you a lot of enjoyment, I think. This is a fast-moving show. It includes humor and an, an adventure, and it asks you, the audience, to be involved by using your imagination. The composers of the musical put these three Bible stories together because they all include a huge storm. And you can find more details about all of them in the Bible. The verses and chapters are in, in your programs because there's a lot of details that we can't include today. But we'll try to hit the important places. Our first storm that we're going to go through is the big flood that um, the world experienced in Noah's time. And when Noah and his family left the ark after more than a year of being inside of it, God saw all that devastation and he said, I'm never going to do this again. I love you too much to ever destroy the world in a flood. And he put a rainbow in the sky as a symbol of that. The second story you'll see today is about Jonah. And I think most of us know that Jonah spent some time in the belly of a great fish. But I'm wondering if you know how he got there. Jonah was on a ship that was in another huge storm. And the pagan ship sailors who were running that ship recognized that the God that Jonah served was sovereign and very powerful, even though Jonah was trying to run away from him. And, and they, out of desperation, threw Jonah overboard, and that's how he ended up in the great fish. When he got thrown up by the fish, then he said, okay, okay, I'll go to Nineveh. But what's sad, and what sometimes we don't realize as we read the story, is that Jonah really hated sinners. He, he didn't like them at all. And he didn't want to go and save them. He recognized that God is compassionate and merciful and slow to anger, but he still didn't think it was fair that people who are bad should be saved. And our final story today is from the book of Acts. It's about Paul. And Paul testifies in Romans 8 that neither life nor death nor angels nor demons nor anything in all creation will ever separate us from God's love. And that's a truth that Paul discovered um, through many events in his life, but the one you'll see today is a week-long storm at sea on a ship that seemed doomed. So all of the storms that you'll see are powerful, but we serve a very powerful God. And he also has a powerful love for us. And that will carry us through any of the storms that we are experiencing in our life. So today, you can relax, however, and just sit back and hear these tales. They're tales from a Bible page, and we're going to act them out for you upon this simple stage.
the story of Noah and the great flood. A long, long time ago, God looked over the face of the earth and discovered human beings weren't doing too well. The Bible says every imagination of the thoughts of their heart was evil continually, which is another way of saying people were acting nasty. Hold it! I'm sorry, but you are enjoying that way too much. Now, all that nastiness was making the earth itself pretty nasty. So God decided to wipe everything off the face of the earth and start over. Now, the one bright spot in this picture is a couple by the name of Mr. and Mrs. Noah. The Bible says that Noah was somebody who walked with God. So God spoke to Noah and asked him to build a great big boat called an ark out of gopher wood. Which I guess is another name for hickory and not a description of how he had to get it. Get it? Go for wood? Go for the wood? <laughs> Sorry, folks. They're not going to get any better. <laughs> Noah and his family went right to work. And pretty soon, the neighbors started to wonder what was going on. Hey, Noah, what in the world are you doing? Um, do you like it? It's our new boat. You're building a boat a hundred miles away from the ocean? Well, it's a hundred miles now, but wait till it starts raining. Let me get this straight. You think it's going to rain so, so hard, this great big homemade thing here is going to float? Um, that's what God says. Oh, your God told you to do it. Well, that's different then. Yeah, they're not stupid. They're crazy! <laughs> I gotta ask, do you all agree with Mama and Papa Fruitcake here? Yeah, of course. That's amazing. A whole family tree that produces nuts? <laughs> and with that, the neighbors really began to make fun of Noah.
Noah and his family and all the animals were safely inside the ark, God reached down and shut them in. Remember that the next time a door closes in your life, it's probably for your own safety. And just about then, it started to rain. Now this is where we need some help from the audience. Would all of you please watch the stage and copy whatever the actors are doing?
story of Jonah and the great fish. Once again, we'll need some help from the audience. Whenever we say the word storm, this sailor will hold up this sign. And I'd like everyone on this side of the audience to make two flashes of lightning, like this. Like this. Boom, boom. So we'll see flash, flash, then we'll hear boom, boom. Let's put it together. Storm. Flash, flash. Boom. Great. I think we're ready to begin. Many years ago, there was a prophet named Jonah who had his very own book of the Bible. <laughs> now you might think someone like that would be a hero, but you What? An attitude problem? Definitely. I do not beat that line of boo boo head. See? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. If you say it, you will hold my breath until I pass out. One day, God said to Jonah, Go to the city of Nineveh! Ah, you don't have to shout. Are you sure? Because it really didn't look like you were listening. Well, why do I need to go to Nineveh? People there are nice. And God said, Preach to them! Okay, okay, I get it. But Jonah really didn't want to go. So instead, he knelt down and prayed. Oh God, let my words rise up to you like a song sung by a choir. <laughs>
the Lord sent a mighty wind. Get ready, everyone. And the wind caused a great, big storm. <laughs> and it stormed. <laughs> and just when you thought it had to stop, wonder if there was someone on the ship who had done something wrong and that's what was causing the terrible weather. <laughs> well, it didn't take the sailors long to figure out who exactly was causing the problem. Eeny, meeny, miny, Jonah! Or this will be my 
with that, the fish bit Jonah up onto the beach. Trust me, you don't want to see this. <laughs> The hard part of the story better to be over. What's next? And God said, Go to the city of Nineveh! Gee, you asked so nicely. How do I say no? So this time, Jonah obeyed God and headed to the great city. But even though God had escaped Jonah, Jonah still didn't want God to save the people of Nineveh. I'm telling you, they're really nasty.
Paul Shipwreck. Once there was a man named Paul. I am named Paul. He was a follower of Jesus. I am a follower of Jesus. He traveled all over the world. I traveled all over the world. He told people that Jesus was the Son of God. Hey everyone, Jesus is the Son of God. Hey, I think you get the point. Okay, I think they get the point. Sorry. Now, there were some religious leaders that didn't like what Paul said about Jesus. In fact, they got so mad they had Paul arrested and thrown into prison. Bring on the prison! <laughs> the prison was strong. There was no hope of escape. It's hopeless. These bars are as thick as young girls' arms. <laughs> Paul was locked away for a long, long time. Two and a half years. But all during that time, Paul told people about Jesus. Psst. Hey, Mr. Guard. Who, me? Yeah, you want to hear something really wonderful? Yes. Paul even preached to his jailers. Wow. <laughs> he just loved to preach the good news. Back and forth. 
forth on the balls of its feet in order to simulate the floating motion as it rode on a sea as blue as pom-poms. They have their fearless captain aboard. Along with the Centurion, that's a Roman army commander named Julius. Ahoy, Julius! Along with a group of Roman soldiers. Ahoy, nameless extras! <laughs> they hadn't gone far when they had to switch to a different ship. <laughs> But the wind was against them, so they traveled slowly. In fact, as winter approached, they were less than halfway to their destination. Now, winter was a season of storms, so Paul advised the captain and Julius to stop the voyage. If you go on now, you can lose some cargo. You can lose the ship. You can lose your life! But they ignored Paul's warning and continued on the journey. Don't worry. What does a preacher know about sailing a ship? Yeah, what could go wrong?
just as God had promised. And when he got there, he did what he always did. Preached the good news with words like this. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can trouble or hardship? Can persecution or hunger? Can poverty or danger or death? <laughs> No, in all these things we have complete victory through him who loved us. Dark waters. We are never alone on the journey. 